Burnley. He had the cheek, the audacity to try for a goal from here. Five awfully defenders. He went for it low. It crept in just centimetres over the end line. And that is a goal. DJ changing this match all alone almost. And the awfully defence now, in terms of their confidence, psychologically affected, surely. They have been the masters of this game. They had 11 wides, I think, in the first half, and they are now trailing by two goals. And there's more pressure. Kevin Keenahan beaten for pace by Charlie Carter. Sending it back in, and this going to the right and wide. Well, just keep an eye on the umpire. The umpire is, an, is Paddy Siggins, and he had no doubt whatsoever to raise the green flag. This is Ked O'Shea, goal scorer against Leash in the semi-final, and he's coming on for PJ Delaney. So the number 14 is going off, number 18 is on. Awfully now. Their character, their ability tested. Willie O'Connor. And off camera and off the ball. There's a little argy bargy going on as that ball is sent wide. And the incident was going on between Joe Dooley and Cullen Cassidy. And that matter has now been sorted out. Meanwhile, the facts are Kilkenny lead by two goals. And there are just about nine minutes left in this match. Well, much has been written and said about DJ Carey. But even on a quiet afternoon, he still will grab the headlines along with his clubmate Charlie Carter tomorrow if Kilkenny win this title. Carter, the star. Carey, the finisher. Here's Charlie, making an angle, now looks for a little bit of support, it's a poor ball, and well cut out. Brian Wheelahan. Johnny Dooley coming for it. Half blocked by Kenneth Brennan, and Joe Dermody can't reach it in time, and concedes the 65. I don't think Canis is too happy with the referee's decision, but uh, it is the correct one. Kevin Fennelly and Dick O'Neill have another brief consultation. That's Liam Kion, the left half back, as he watches Brian Whelan take this 65. Perhaps happy to just tap it over the bar. That's Brian Wheelahan's first point of the game. And there's now five points between the teams. And for a game that really never sparkled in terms of a Leinster final that we were anticipating, it has plenty to talk about this evening. And tomorrow... And it's not over yet. Philly Larkin, great catch. Nice skill. Oh, lovely. Stepping aside, Johnny Pilkington. And that's gone wide. Fuck out landing short this time. Comes to Pete Barry, who wanted a little bit of support from Michael Kavna. Martin Hanemi without the helmet. Ken O'Shea, blocked down by Michael Dagna. Looking for somebody to make himself available. Joe Dooley does. Down towards John Troy, knocked away by the tenacious Willie O'Connor. Philly Larkin over towards DJ Carey. 
now with two goals to his credit. Here comes DJ, nice floating ball, thank you very much. DJ is alive and well. And two goals and a point to his credit. The game of hurling would have suffered a huge loss if DJ hadn't regained his appetite because when he's hurling, he really is something to watch. Offaly have possession again. Team Kion does well. Willie O'Connor. Kevin Martin. Things not coming right for Offaly now at the moment. To his right half back, Cullum Cassidy. DJ Carey about to tackle. Darren Hanafy with a very valuable point. Offaly are by no means panicking. That's the scoreline, 3-8 to 1-9. Just about seven minutes left now in this match. A game that's going to many parts of the world. New York, Chicago, Boston. Where I know Kieran McDermott and Neve McDermott are watching this game. And I'm sure that they're enjoying this Leinster hurling final now. But can Kilkenny hold on? Offaly. The masters, above all else, are fighting to the final whistle. Who will forget the Leinster semi-final? Johnny Pilkington. Taking off. Getting away from Philly Larkin and Canis Brennan. Going for the score, dropping it in low. Joe Dooley is there. Nice little backward flick. Lovely. Will it work? The referee blows his whistle for a foul on Paddy Mulher as John Ryan and Colm Pat O'Neill, it is, in fact, square up to each other. Their spirit, above all else, in the county of Offaly. Now, it's dead straight in front of the goals. Can Johnny Dooley do a DJ carry? Or will he be happy again to go for the point? Dooley. The Kenny defence trying to marshal their lines. Willie O'Connor interrupts and a very good tactic by Kilkenny because they have now upset Johnny Dooley's concentration, I'm sure, as they introduce Michael Phelan, the man who failed a groin test. Here's Johnny Dooley, meanwhile, going for the goal. Hits it, saved wonderfully by the Kilkenny defence and out for a 65. But a very good tactical move by Kevin Fennelly bringing off Niall Maloney just before Johnny Dooley took this shot. It was well saved along the line and deflected out for a 65. And Canis Brennan is in trouble here as he limps out to try and get near potty ball here. Here's a chance for Offaly and that's gone over the bar. And I think that was potty ball here that actually got the final shot. They're closer, but there is still a goal required. Four points in roughly about four minutes. Less than four minutes. Runs all the way through. Michael Phelan just introduced. Charlie Carter. Goal and five points. Quite a tally. Here's a dangerous ball, and it hops. Agonizingly away from DJ Carey. Over the end line. This was close as the goalkeeper came out and it literally hopped in the small rectangle. Babs Keating. There's one thing for sure, all of his teams have character and spirit. Offaly's tested now. Johnny Pilkington shot half blocked down. Good defending by the Kilkenny captain, Tom Hickey. Back to Canis Brennan. Gets in his clearance despite the efforts of Michael Dyckman. Comes down towards Andy Comerford, all alone inside. And here it comes, is Charlie. He knows Stephen Byrne is coming out to meet him. Here's the icing, and it's off the crossbar. The O'Keefe trophy almost had the Kilkenny colours wrapped around it, because that would surely have ensured victory. 
Liam Kion. Tapping it forward to Andy Comerford. This is all fine for Kilkenny now. They're in the driving seat. They'll hold possession as Brian McAvoy sends that over the crossbar for his first point of this Leinster final. Five points between the teams now. Charlie Carter had the opportunity of the Leinster final. Stephen Byrne had the chance and he wrapped it up against the crossbar. Here's Michael Dyknan. Kevin Martin. Kilkenny will be happy if they continue to hand pass that ball around there. It's a poor ball. There's nobody in there. Except a Kilkenny man. Liam Keown. Gets in his clearance. Philly Larkin is available in the centre. Good clearance. Using that ball effectively. Ken O'Shea. Good defending by Offaly. Michael Phelan lends a little bit of physical support and presence. Phelan from a difficult angle. Oh, that's a great point. There's a fight on for places down by the River Nore. Ken O'Shea a substitute. Michael Phelan a substitute. They worked hard for Phelan's point. This was a well-taken score from quite a difficult angle. It looks now as if the bonfires can be lit in Kilkenny. It's the first Leinster final since 1993, our first Leinster title, although Offaly have now just responded. But I think at this stage, a point is too little. Darren Hanafy scoring his second point. Five points between them. The ball drops down towards John Ryan. Pat O'Neill. It's behind you, lads. Volleyball here nips in. And that's going to be full time whistle. It's the 56th title for Kilkenny. Wonderful play by Charlie Carter and this man, DJ Carey. We anticipated the first one. We did not anticipate the second one because it looked as if he was going to be happy with a point, but it just rolled over the line. DJ Carey, master craftsman, meets a wonderful hurler, Kevin Keenan, and consoles him on this Leinster final defeat. But no doubt about it, Kilkenny's second half display was quite masterful at times without ever reaching the heights that one would expect of Kilkenny. But Charlie Carter, the Goran twins, they really are a deadly duo when they do both perform. Today, DJ was rather quiet. Charlie was the star overall in terms of hurling. But they'll be talking about these two boys for a long time. The Offaly selectors, despondent, Babs, Keating there beside the chairman of the Offaly County Board on the right. But no doubt about it, Offaly will respond to this defeat in the wonderful sporting way that they always do. They're still in the All-Ireland Championship, remember. Yes, interesting match at Croke Park again that didn't really have any recognisable pattern, I suppose, for most of the 70 minutes, but that doesn't matter to Kilkenny at the moment. They have taken that Leinster title. And Pete Finnerty, you were making the point that had they lost this final, it would have represented something like a run-up to 1921 since they last went five years without a championship. Yeah, the 1921 was the last time that Kilkenny went uh, five years without winning a Leinster title. And I know that pressure wasn't on the guys today because they wouldn't be thinking about it, but had they lost, it would be fired at them tonight on the way home. Sure. And especially after last year, I mean, it's okay saying that both sides are still in the championship, but I mean, Kilkenny lost out last year in this situation, and there were doubts in their head then for the rest of the, of the summer. There was. They lost out to Wexford. Um, Billy Byrne put an end to their Leinster title that, um, last year. Then they went on in the beat Galway, but there was still always a doubt in the team, and they were switching and changing and it throughout the campaign. This year they didn't change it that much and they stuck with it. And even when things were, they were struggling in the first half to come to terms with awfully forwards, they stayed with it. And Canis Brennan had a magnificent game in, in the second half. Sir Farrell, how did you view that final? 
Yeah, well, like, I think, you know, as I said, like, Kenny went in very happy at half-time because awfully, really, in the first half, that's when the game was lost. It wasn't lost in the second half because it played very well against the Breeze, but like, you can't afford to miss all them chances. And, like, you'd feel that if Kilkenny got half the chance, they were going to score. And, like, when you have Charlie Carter on fire, OK, did you got his two goals, great ones from Freeze and a point or two here and there, and other fours picked it up, but Charlie was on fire all through, like, and, uh, you know, he was on a very inexperienced player early on, but it doesn't matter who he was on, really, like, he's just on fire at the moment, and, like, he's a great player. And, like, you had Kenneth Britton having a storm in game as well, but, like, Brian Whelan, other centre back, he was fantastic. As well, yeah. like you know, and uh, John Trice centre forward. Like the thing is that often be very disappointed, but they still live to fight another day. Of course. Well, obviously there were a couple of key points in that second half, no less so. DJ Carey's goals. We'll be having a look at those. Tom Hickey has the honour of accepting that magnificent trophy. And what a year it is for Tom Hickey after his club surprise win in the Le Kenny Championship, of course, uh, last year. He accepts the Bob O'Keefe Cup. OK, with me, Pete Finnerty and Cyril Farrell have been looking at that match, of course. The interesting thing, Pete, is that although the DJ Carey goals changed the course of this match, the first goal opportunity fell to Offaly. Yes, it fell to Offaly early on, and you felt that Offaly really needed a goal at that stage, and they should have t really taken it. It comes down the field here, a long ball, and watch the great teamwork here. Everybody finds a man with a pass. Straight into Joe, and Joe into Billy. And Billy does everything right. But Tom Hickey read the situation so well and came in on the far side and Billy wasn't to see that. He got the ball on goal, that would trickle in over the line, would be three points for Offaly, but Tom read it excellently and came in. Tom had yeah. a fine game today and he's well worthy to be captain. The interesting thing about DJ Carey's goals, <laughs> Cyril Farrell, is when he stood up to the first free and you speculated that he was going to go for the goal and I said no way, like Kenny were a point on if memory serves me at the time, you tap the ball over the bar you think and just get on at the match but DJ Carey is a different man to that? Well he's a different man and it wasn't going well from today but you, you can't, you know, but the way he stood back from the ball he took the three, two or three yards back, you kind of feel that he's going to go for it, like he has great risk control, he throws it in front of Michael and he blazes hard, he gets to three or four yards on that throw, yeah. there's very little a defender can do unless you're lucky enough to deflect off you over the bar or hit you and knock you out, there's nothing, this is a rasper, like if you were, if you were to say speed that ball it'd be probably over 100 miles per hour. Oh, yeah. But, like, that was a fantastic shot, great goal. Like, once he steps back, you know in his heart and soul he's going to go for it. And he hits it so hard, even so good deflection, he's probably going to go over the bar. Nothing, nothing to the defenders, you can't blame for that. The second free, though, everyone would think that he's going to tap it over because his stance is just over the ball as such. Now, whether he meant it or not, it doesn't matter once it crossed the line. And the umpire was in a perfect position. But his stance that time would, would make you believe that he's just going to tap it over. But awfully, I suppose, can't complain in the sense that Johnny Dooley did the very same thing to Limerick one day. Like, you know, that kind of a stance would mean that you're going to tap it over. But DJ being DJ, not in the game as such, needed to lift himself, and he did it, which shows like he's a great player. Going on from here, Pete, and looking at the championship from this on, could Kenny go into the semi-finals, Offaly have another chance the next time? How do you think that might work out now? Well, it'll help Offaly because Babs isn't long there. It takes a while to gel, and this is the first defeat that they've had. And he can go back now and he can drive them harder than he could after the Wexford game. It takes a few months to get to know your players and when you're under pressure, how the selectors operate. And Babs will welcome the game. He'll welcome the second chance. Now, he'd love to be in a semi-final. Kilkenny, on the other hand, are into the semi-final now. They're only two steps away from the All-Ireland final. They're playing at home in Crow Park for the next, two, next game anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're beginning to gel together very nicely. Cam Sprint and I was very surprised at centre-back now. I, I, I doubted him, I'll be honest. I doubted yeah. him at centre-back. But... Cam's always a mild hurler and timid and he come out and tip it up and over the bar. Now he's using a little bit of timber and he's getting stuck in, he's strong under the ball. So he's been successful at fullback. Pat O'Neill is successful at or at centre back. Pat O'Neill is successful at fullback. Yeah. Midfield is going well. And DJ will never be as quiet as again, I don't think, from play. Even having said that, he still scored two one, but he was very, very quiet from play, and DJ will want a bigger game the next day from himself. Sir Farrell obviously was looking at this thing with a direct interest in it, assuming that the game goes well against what's common for you. You could be meeting Offaly. Yeah, well, the only thing is, off, like, with this double chance for Linster and Munster, Michael, the thing is, Offaly would be disappointed, but they're just having a cup to drink out of tonight. They'll be back in training next Tuesday night, so they have a double chance, and, like, they're going to yeah. be very hard to beat. Kilkenny deserve to win today, there's no doubt about that, like, you know, and they'll be all looking for better displays from both, both managers will be looking for better displays the next day. OK, who'd you pick as man of the match? Well, I think standing out all day, like, there was, there was great performances by Kenneth Brennan, sure, uh, Brian Whelan, fantastic player. John Troy, but I, th I think today you'd have to give it to Charlie Carter. All his scores are from freeze, and he's a great first touch hurler, perfectly on the left side, but on the right as well. Played a, played a fantastic game, and he's having a great season. Oh, well, for sure of it, and certainly when Kilkenny weren't firing on all cylinders, I suppose, in that forward line, Charlie Carter was the one man who was. Let's take a quick check. And a simple opportunity for a player like Elliot. Derry had the opportunity.